Sangyong's Musso Pickup aims to redefine the value proposition for customers in this segment and provide them with rugged but car-like transport. It's the only model in the sector tough enough to offer a seven-year warranty, and its combined payload and towing capacity is unmatched in the class. If you're buying in this sector, you probably won't have been considering one of these. Perhaps you should. What do you want when buying a pickup? Probably things like rugged practicality, load capacity, towing strength, reliability and cab space. Here's a contender you probably haven't considered that claims to be class leading in many of these areas at the same time as being one of the most affordable pickups in its class to buy. This is the Sanyol Musso. Now it might not be overstating things to suggest that this LCV is one of the brand's most important models. While this growing South Korean maker's passenger car designs must battle with badge prejudice against more established rivals, this product will sell to pick up people who've usually no such hang-ups. They simply want the toughest, best value vehicle their funds can give them. And this could well be it. Some background might be useful at this point. After all, since Sanyon pickups haven't so far made much headway in our market, you probably don't know much about them. The Korean brand's most recent pickup design was the one originally launched as the Corando Sports back in 2012, then updated and rebranded with Musso badging in 2016. This new era Q200 series Musso model is very different from that, sharing all its engineering with the fourth generation version of Sangyong's Rexton luxury SUV that was launched here in the autumn of 2017. That's given this tough, very capable truck a car-like cabin, cutting edge infotainment, and Sanyong says, pretty car-like driving dynamics too, especially in terms of refinement from the 2.2 litre diesel engine. More importantly though, this Sanyong can now claim a one ton payload and a 3.5 ton towing capacity at the same time, which means that it can offer the highest combined total load capacity of any pickup on sale in the UK. And for those impressed by that, but worried about buying into a name they may not know, there's the peace of mind of an exemplary seven year, 150,000 mile segment leading warranty. Sounds promising. Let's check this Korean contender out. If you're used to driving pickups, there'll be one thing that will immediately strike you as soon as you set off in a Musso. This model's exceptional refinement, and that's a big deal. The relative din you get from the diesel engines in most of the light trucks we test is one of the major things that stops us from recommending them as everyday, go anywhere, do anything, family transport. After all, on longer trips, that kind of thing really gets a bit wearing. For highway use of that sort, this Musso for us is segment leading, a world away even from something quite expensive in this sector like a Mercedes X-Class. You really do feel that you could be in a mid-level SUV, and not only because the 2.2 litre diesel up front is so relatively muted. Sanyong enlisted the experts at Pininfarina to help it eradicate noise in other areas too. Hence the polyester wheel arch linings, the additional body mounts and extra sealing for the engine bay and the doors. The firm suspension setup uses rear coils rather than the crude rear leaf springs that still feature in some rivals. Away from the highway, refinement remains excellent and it'll also appeal to operators that this Sanyong offers the highest combined gross train weight in the class. It can carry a one ton payload at the same time as pulling along a 3.5 ton trailer. The figures we've just quoted refer to the automatic gearbox variant that most buyers will probably choose. It's a well-proven ASIN six-speed package. 
uh, a six-speed manual gearbox is of course also available. Either way, the engine beneath the bonnet is the same. That 2.2 litre EXDI 220 Sanyong developed unit we mentioned earlier, a power plant that features in a number of the company's models. Here it puts out 181 PS and 400 Newton metres of torque between 1600 and 2600 RPM. That's enough to breeze you past 60 miles an hour in about 12 seconds on the way to a top speed that's rated at 115 miles an hour in the auto model or 121 miles an hour in the manual. Handling on tarmac is better than with most rivals, aided considerably by steering that's quite a bit more feelsome than is the case with most pickups. It's light but accurate and complemented by levels of cornering body roll that are well controlled by the mediocre standards that prevail in this class. Obviously, as with any model in this sector, uh, things improve quite a lot if there's a bit of weight in the back. Uh, we'll also mention that there's a reasonable 5.91 metre kerb to kerb turning circle. And off-road? Well, this Musso uses much the same part-time selectable four-wheel drive system as its predecessor, a setup that's been reliably proven over some of the most demanding terrain in the world. Most of the time, you'll be rear-driven and leave it in its 2HI setting, but for icier mornings and light off-road use, you have a 4HI option that brings in extra front-wheel traction as required. Plus, as you'd expect, there's a proper low-range gearbox offering a 4-low option for gnarlier trails. The mud plugging stats aren't quite as good as they were for the previous model. An approach angle of up to 22.8 degrees, a departure angle of up to 23.4 degrees, and a ramp angle of up to 20.3 degrees. And there's no option for a uh, mechanical differential lock to get you out of really sticky situations. The wading depth of 350 millimeters isn't anything to write home about either. On the plus side though, you get decent tires, uh, hill descent control, and a useful 215 millimeters of ground clearance. Creating a pickup from a luxury SUV certainly seems like a promising concept. That's what Sanyong has set out to do here, the front half of this Musso being virtually identical to that of the brand's fourth generation Rexton model. The result is a muscular stance that in some ways suits this SUV product rather better. Only this double cab body style is offered here, but that's the one the vast majority of buyers will want. At the front, a bold chrome line bisects a shoulder wing radiator grille flanked by headlamps that get automatic projection technology in the top Saracen version. At that level in the range, they also feature dual-like LED daytime running lights, and top models get a metal front skid plate below the lower air intake too. All variants get sporty front fog lights built into these corner cutouts. From the side, you find the same rather curious mixture of bodywork swage lines that characterises the profile of a Mark IV model Rexton. There's a conventional horizontal one that runs just below the high set window line and separates two further curved creases. The first of these heavily accents the front wheel arch, while the second rearward one flows from the tail lamp along the side of the cargo bay before dropping down sharply just ahead of the rear door handle. Alloy wheels are standard across the range with 17 inch rims on the base model and these 18 inch rims fitted as standard on all other variants. Providing you avoid entry level trim, you get side steps and roof rails too. So, plenty going on in profile, but much less here at the rear where the brand has decided that a tough workmanlike shape is all that's required, embellished by these larger, slightly more stylish rear lamp clusters. Of course, what's more important is what you can't see, the solid quad frame chassis that's fashioned from 1.5 GPA grade ultra strength steel, a world first, featuring 81.7% high strength steel for greatly improved body strength. This supports the one-ton payload and facilitates the kind of tough life that Musso models like this one have to lead in the Korean military. 
Now, at well over five meters in length, this Q200 series Musso is larger than its predecessor in every dimension, which delivers one of the largest cabins in the class. And it's here that we're promised that the biggest steps forward have been made. Let's see. Once inside, a glance around reveals interior quality and design that's way better than anything Sanyong has produced in a commercial vehicle in the past, and easily a match for mainstream market rivals. In fact, it's our view that the ambience offered here is superior to what you'll find in most rival pickups. Uh, here again, it helps that just about everything's being carried over from the Rexton. So you get this smart three-spoke leather trim steering wheel and silver trimmed fascia highlights. Soft touch plastics uh, proliferate in the areas that you'll interact with regularly with harder, more brittle fittings banished to areas lower down the dash that you'll rarely touch. Plus the stalks and buttons work with a quality click. Infotainment provision is far better than you might expect it to be too, courtesy of the larger, higher set HD center dash touchscreen that comes as standard, providing you avoid entry level trim. Incorporated into the monitor is a six speaker DAB audio system, a rear view camera, and smartphone mirroring that uses the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto systems. Some of the menu buttons in, uh, used are rather small, but the graphics are impressively sharp and it's helpful that the display can show its functions in a useful split screen format. Plus there's an SD card slot should you need it. Mid-range Rebel models get this monitor in eight inch form, but if you can stretch to it in the top Saracen variant we've got here, it comes in a 9.2 inch size, large enough to properly incorporate TomTom -tom navigation. A proper pickup should have a properly high commanding driving position, and this one does. It's easy to get comfortably placed, particularly if you've avoided base EX spec, in which case you'll get heated and ventilated seats that feature either leather look or full Nappa leather upholstery, depending on the trim grade you selected. Most models get a heated leather steering wheel too. That'll be a key benefit for operators who typically have to make early morning winter starts. Through that wheel, you view a smartly styled instrument cluster that features this 3.5 inch monochrome central TFT LCD trip computer screen between the two main dials. The ergonomics are good too. Front three quarter visibility is excellent. Uh, judging where the extremities are is easy and the deep side windows really help at T-junctions and roundabouts. It's even straightforward to see out of the back, which is rare in a pickup, uh, thanks to the huge rear screen and the thin rear pillars. As for cab storage, well, there's a large stowage area beneath the front armrest, plus you get big door pockets, uh, a lockable glove box, and a tray for small items in front of the gear lever. Time to take a seat in the rear. And on the way to do that, we'll take note of the way that the doors are designed to cover the sills along the lower part of the body to ensure that passengers don't pick up dirt from the side of the vehicle when getting in and out. Once on the back seat, you'll find yourself in an area of this pickup that gives it another important advantage over some of its most direct competitors. The rear bench in many double cab models in this class seems often to be something of an afterthought, cramped for the feet and uncomfortably upright for the back. There's none of that here. There's plenty of room for head, shoulders, knees, feet, and the deeply set windows give a bright airy feel too. In addition, a low center transmission tunnel makes it easier for a third adult to be taken back here than it would be in some rivals. And as usual with pickups, it's possible to fold down the rear seat backrest if you want to use the rear cabin for storage. There are seat back pockets and decently sized door bins too. Previous Sanyong pickup models have vastly undercut obvious rivals on price, but then arguably that kind of approach isn't too difficult when the product concerned isn't quite as sophisticated as the opposition. 
This Q200 Series Musso model is the brand's first really class competitive pickup, yet it still manages to maintain a useful price advantage over its rivals. Prices for mainstream variants sitting in the 20 to 25,000 pound bracket, excluding VAT. The only body style on offer is this double cab one, which is what nearly all customers in this segment want, though Sanyong has also developed a long wheelbase body shape that you can ask your dealer about if you want a larger cargo bay. All Musso variants get the same mechanical package, a 2.2 litre 181 PS EXDI diesel mated to four wheel drive. Automatic transmission is a 1250 pound option, uh, providing you avoid entry level EX trim. If you're shopping in this segment, you'll probably be familiar with the main alternatives. The only rival that can match this Musso's asking prices is Isuzu's D-Max, but if you specified one of those to match the spec of this Sanyong, you'd probably need the best part of another thousand pounds, and then you'd still be getting yourself a pickup with less power and higher running costs. If you're looking at affordable options beyond a Musso or a D-Max, you'll need to find between a thousand and two thousand pounds more for a Ford Ranger, a Toyota Hilux, the design sold either as a Nissan Navara or a Renault Alaskan, or the truck sold as either a Mitsubishi L200 or a Fiat Fullback. You'll need around five thousand pounds more for a Volkswagen Amarok and around seven thousand pounds more for a Mercedes X-Class. Ultimately, to match Sangyong's pricing, you'd probably have to buy one of the established contenders in late low mileage second hand guys. But even then, on a comparable base competitor model, you'd have to do without some of the kit that comes as standard here. Even on an entry level Musso EX model, you get 17 inch alloy wheels, a DAB audio, uh, Bluetooth phone compatibility, uh, electric windows, uh, remote central locking that includes the tailgate, and a proper full-size spare wheel. Most Musso buyers will probably want to stretch at least to mid-range Rebel trim, which adds a few more niceties. Outside, you get larger 18-inch wheels, roof rails, black side steps, and Rebel graphics. Inside, there's leather look up upholstery, uh, cooled ventilated front seats, plus heat for the front seats. Uh, you get heat for the steering wheel at this level too, a key benefit for operators who typically have to make cold winter morning starts. Other features with this trim level include a rear view reversing camera, floor mats and an 8 inch center dash smart audio infotainment system with Google CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. If you want more and can stretch up to around £25,000 excluding VAT, there's the plusher Saracen version. Uh, that's what we've got here, recognisable via its uh, smarter, shiny 18-inch wheels, Saracen body graphics, bright finished tubular side steps, a metal front skid plate, bright rear corner bars, and a bright finish for the mirrors and the door handles. At this level in the range, you get automatic projection headlamps and LED positioning lights, plus cruise control. And the interior features full Nappa leather upholstery, heated rear seats, powered front seat adjustment, and a larger 9.2 inch screen for the smart audio infotainment system that allows it to display TomTom -tom navigation. To begin with from launch, there was a further specially branded Rhino limited edition model too, which included automatic transmission and metallic paint. Talking of paint, uh, there's a wide range of colours, starting with Grand White, beyond which there's a range of metallic shades. Indian Red, uh, Space Black, Atlantic Blue, Fine Silver and Marble Grey. Your dealer will of course be able to supply the usual range of pickup accessories, uh, tow bars, hard tops, load covers and so on. As for safety, well, Sanyong has got around to adding twin front, side and curtain airbags to this generation model, as well as the usual forward facing airbags for the driver and the front passenger. Plus, as usual, there are active head restraints to guard against impact whiplash, a four channel anti-lock braking system, ESP stability control with ARP active rollover protection, uh, hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions and Isofix child seat fastenings.
There's none of the camera-driven kit that's now starting to appear on some rivals. But the Korean brand makes the point that safety isn't just about clever gadgets, but also about inherent chassis strength. This model claims to be stiffer than its competitors thanks to its high strength steel quad frame construction. Plus there are impact absorbing elements in the steering wheel to minimize injuries from a frontal collision. While the structure and the materials employed in the frontal area of the body are designed to improve pedestrian safety. What really sets this Musso apart from its rivals is the weight that it can carry. The automatic version of this model that most buyers will probably choose is the only pickup on the market able to tow three and a half tons and carry a one ton payload. The specific figure is actually 1,085 kilograms. All of this at the same time. This gives this Ssangyong a combined gross train weight that's rated at a massive 6,750 kilograms for an automatic model. Now these are stats that really will get the attention of savvy operators. Inevitably, you won't do quite as well if you choose this Ssangyong with a manual gearbox. Going for a stick shift reduces your potential combined gross train weight rating to 6,450 kilograms, courtesy of a towing rating of 3.2 tons and a payload capacity of 1,090. Five kilograms. So you can take really heavy stuff. That's encouraging straight off the bat. But what if the items in question are really bulky? Well, let's take a look at the load bay. Now, Sanyong has developed a long wheelbase version of this Musso for people who really want to supersize things. Uh, but this standard variance capacity should be quite sufficient for most. The loading height is 765 millimeters from the ground. And once you've got your stuff onto the large flat rear deck, you'll find you've got 1300 millimeters of load bay length, 60 millimeters of load bay height, and a load bay width that's a class leading maximum of 1570 millimeters. That's 100 millimeters more than a Mitsubishi L200, narrowing to 1110 millimeters between the wheel arches. Sanyong has also included a durable load bed liner and a 12 volt socket to charge loads of machinery. Plus there are four tough anchor points so that you can easily tie things down. Many owners will want to add the optional rigid hardtop your dealer might well suggest that you specify for all weather protection and load base security. It comes with a hinged rear window that closes behind the tailgate so that the car's central locking secures and protects the contents. And you'll find that this feature has been styled and color matched to complement the rest of the car so that it won't look like a tacked on afterthought as do many retrofit hardtops. As for running costs, well, you won't be expecting a pickup with a gross vehicle weight of over 3.2 tonnes to be especially frugal. So the return in this case, a quoted 35.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle for the manual model, may be better than you might have feared. Choosing the automatic gearbox doesn't have too much of an effect on this. The fuel figure falls to 32.9 miles to the gallon, but it does have slightly more of an impact on CO2 emissions, which rise from 211 grams per kilometer in the manual to 226 grams per kilometer. That leaves ownership peace of mind, something Sanyong likes to specialize in providing. This vehicle covered by a best in class seven year, 150,000 mile warranty. There's no irritating small print limiting the extent of the cover either. So even if you're planning to continually traverse the globe in your Musso, all its major components will be covered, including wheel bearings, suspension joints and bushes, uh, steering joints, shock absorbers, even the audio system. Wearable components such as clutch discs and brake friction materials that could have their life reduced by poor driving are covered for one year or 12,000 miles and there's a three year guarantee for the battery and the paintwork. Insurance groups uh, start at Group 40 for the EX, uh, for the mid-range Rebel version it's Group 40 for the manual or Group 41 for the auto and for the Saracen variant it's Group 41. 
As for the other costs you're likely to encounter as a Musso driver, well, you'll have to book this pickup in for a service every 12 months or 12 and a half thousand miles, depending on which comes around sooner. There's a lot to think about when it comes to picking out a pickup. You're buying one in the first place because you want practical, go anywhere ruggedness. Yet, if at least some of the time it's got to serve as your only means of transport, then you also need car like qualities, real refinement, and a comfortable cabin, for example. Ideally, you'd want all of this along with a high specification and a price that reads like a misprint. You'd be asking for a lot. Yet here, Sanyong has struggled to provide exactly that and got remarkably close to delivering it. There are, it's true, some more sophisticated, higher profile choices you could make in this sector, and some of them have classier cabins and can carry or tow slightly more. Nearly all, though, can be painfully pricey in comparison to this Musso, and in most cases are much cruder when it comes to things like refinement and steering feel. That last point we think is significant. This model is not only as honest, reliable, and highly capable as every pickup should be, but crucially, thanks in large part to excellent pin and farina tuned refinement, it's also better suited to longer distance driving than many of its contemporaries. On top of that, you get the highest combined total load capacity in the class, plus the kind of comprehensive after sales support every pickup should have and even a bit of a sense of style too. All from a brand you've maybe never heard of, but might like to start to get to know. In summary, the word Musso may mean rhinoceros in Korean, but what we found here is a pickup that can offer more than just tough robustness. True, the resulting package certainly isn't an obvious choice in this segment. In many ways though, it's really rather a clever one. <laughs>